Hey you guys, it's Lindsay here and today I'm here to talk about my March makes. And March just happens to be the month when all of my collaborations with various pattern designers and fabric stores kind of all collided. So this month I have my Cali Fabrics blog tour, blogger team blog <laughs> do. I have my Blank Slate Patterns blogger team blog do. I have the Style Maker Fabrics Spring Blog Tour kicks off at the end of March, the first day of spring. So I have that project due. Um, and we have our So My Style project for March also due. Now that's not a collaboration or anything, but that is something that I intend on keeping up with. So let's get started with the ideas that I have. So the first thing is the Blank Slate Patterns. Um, her patterns are so great because they are literally jumping off points to make whatever you want. I mean, honestly, when they say they are blank slate, they are a blank slate so that you can dream up and embellish any way that you want. So when we were in New York City last year, or the last time, which I guess was in technically in 2015, fall of 2015, we were at Perrin Fabrics and I picked up this really, really pretty, no idea what it is, it's a knit. It's this beautiful periwinkle color and mixed in with this like little light blue, gray, silver metallic. And it has kind of this um, ornate kind of design all over it, maybe like medallions or something like that. Um, and I don't know, I just fell in love with it. I thought it was really cool and really pretty. Um, it was a little bit pricey from what I remember. Definitely in the double digits, maybe on the higher end of the teens um, per yard. So I only got one yard of it. Um, and my intention always was just to make a very basic t-shirt with it. So Blank Slate Patterns has two options. There's the blank t-shirt and then the shoreline boat neck. And I think I'm leaning toward the blank t-shirt because it doesn't have set in sleeves. She calls them dropped cap sleeves. So if you can imagine like a dropped shoulder, a dropped sleeve, um, that's what it is. So it's all one seam. Basically the pattern is two pieces, a front and a back, and that's it. Which is great whenever you have fabrics that have such an ornate design like this that you really want to stand out. You don't want too many seams to break up all of that. So I think the blank t-shirt would be perfect. Um, but like I said, she also has the shoreline boat neck, um, which is again, a very simple, straightforward um, top pattern, but it does have set in sleeves. So you'll get a front and a back and then two sleeves. So there would be a seam here. Um, so I think I'm gonna put this on my dress form and just get an idea for how it drapes and how that drop cap sleeve would look. I definitely don't want it to like stick out straight. Um, I want it to curve over the shoulder like it's supposed to. So if it does that, then I'll lean toward the blank. And if it doesn't, then I will make set in sleeves with the shoreline boat deck. So that is plan number one. Okay, so the second thing on my list is, excuse me, the second thing on my list is the So My Style project for March, which is the Megan Nielsen Virginia Leggings. And again, another very straightforward pattern. The leggings, from what I can tell, it's just a front and a back and a waistband. There's no funky seams going down the legs or anything like that, like there were with like, I think the Pacific leggings has some of that or if anything they have like a funky belt. I don't know there's all kinds of leggings patterns out there today but it seems like these are very straightforward um, plain leggings. So I thought I would make um, some workout leggings. I have leggings but honestly they don't get worn a lot here. Um, maybe it's just this season because it's been so warm but I have like my standard black leggings that I really like and don't see any reason to replicate those. Um, I did buy some thicker knit Ponte from Spandex House when we were in New York City last time. And um, my thought was, oh, I'll have winter leggings now, but we didn't even have a winter. So now I'm worried that if I make those, I won't even ever wear them. 
Um, so I decided on workout leggings because I do go to the gym and I do need to cover up there. Um, so I pulled this fabric and I got this, I believe it was from Spandex House again. Um, and it's just this really cool like watercolor tie dye, um, like knit. Uh, like lycra, a lot of lycra knit, almost like dancewear or something like that. Um, I, I like it a lot for leggings for working out because the back is like the dye goes all the way through. It's not white on the wrong side and colored on the right side because when you bend over when you're working out it has a has less of a tendency to be see-through um, if the color is is going all the way through the fabric so that's why I got this fabric to make leggings for working out so what better time to make them than for the March uh, so my style project um, the Megan Nielsen leggings have a high rise and a low rise so I'll probably make the high rise for working out and then I think there's two lengths also so I'll make the shorter length um, and maybe even crop it even further to just below the knee since that's what I prefer whenever I am working out so yeah I'll make it out of this really gorgeous like red orange pink there's like some grays in there. Um, I just love this print so much for workout leggings. So we will see how that goes. Next on the list is the Cali Fabrics blog. And Cali is always super, super generous with um, the folks on their blogger team. And I was able to, pick, you can really go on there and pick anything you want from their website. So, so many people have been talking about this double brushed poly and I saw it on their site. Um, so I thought, okay, this is a great chance for me to pick that up. They have the floral, which I have here in olive, and they also have the wine colored floral. And they also have two kinds of stripes. Like one is kind of like a grungier stripe and the other one is like a finer, um, more precise stripe. So I got all three. Well, technically I got all six. So I got the floral and both of the stripes in olive and I got the floral and both of the stripes in wine. And the plan with these is, I let me pull up the pattern here, hold on. Okay, so the plan with these is to make McCall's 7383. It is a pullover dress, um, very loose fitting, um, and it actually um, can be color blocked because it has diagonal seams. So it has one diagonal seam going across the chest, one kind of going from the waist to the hip, so you can use three different fabrics. So the thought is to take the floral and put that on the bottom and then place each of the stripes in the other in the other sections. I haven't looked at it yet. I haven't draped it on my dress form or anything like that to see like how it all looks together, but in my mind it's going to work. Um, so that's the plan for the olive. And then for the wine, oh, you know what? It might have been one of the simplicity patterns that I got. Hold on one sec. And for the wine version, I wanted to make Simplicity 1323. I picked this up at the five for five dollar sale at Joann's last weekend. Um, version A is just a solid top. Um, it does have a um, tissue hem, is that what it's called? Um, you know, where the hem is kind of asymmetrical and then there's a band. So that would be a really cute way to use one of the stripes and then, or the floral and one of the stripes on the hem or figure that out some way. But then it also has this really cute um, kind of infinity scarf. So I thought all that together, those three, like the band in one, the body of the shirt, shirt in another one, and then the um, scarf and the third one would make a really cute kind of like outfit and I could just throw it on with jeans, I could throw it on with work pants, I could throw it on with leggings, I could throw it on with anything and just head out the door and those all three coordinated together um, so they would look kind of pulled together and polished. That's the idea for the wine version of the Cali Fabrics fabric. So that's two other projects and then we have um, Stylemaker Fabrics Spring Blog Tour. So she has so many wonderful fabrics coming to her shop. She's already put a bunch of them in there already and the rest of them will come out with the spring blog tour that starts on March the 20th. Um, and she's found some really, really great stuff. 
Um, if you liked what we have done in the past with the last spring tour and then the last falls tour, you're going to be very happy again. Um, the stuff that she's gotten is sort of similar to that, but even better in some ways and a lot of great prints and just a lot of great springtime stuff. I think you're going to really love. So what I picked, and this is kind of like a sneak peek. I hope it's okay for me to be sharing this early, um, is this wonderful print. It's a rayon crepe and it's butterfly wings. Can y'all see that? So I just fell in love with this. Um, and decided that it needed to be a maxi dress. I mean, look at that drape. It's going to be so flowy, so beautiful, and you know, kind of like the idea of butterfly wings, like the, the skirt of the maxi dress is going to be huge. And so it's gonna be very like flowy. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. Um, the colors are black and white, but the I don't know if it's like the watercolor effect it almost looks navy so to go with this i also got one of her linens um the navy linen that i'm going to make a little cropped jacket out of to pair on top of this for whenever it gets cool out night uh cool out at night or in the morning whenever it's cooler i can throw it on um over the dress so i can't remember if i picked out a specific maxi dress my inclination is no I haven't um, unless it's M7381 I think that's the closest that I've gotten to finding something that I really love again I want a I want a dress that has a huge freaking skirt so um, what I might do is take one of my like fit and flare dresses very simple one with a pleated bodice or a pleated skirt um, and lengthen that skirt because you know a pleated skirt the hem of those things is already pretty wide and then if you lengthen that out that would make for an enormous skirt which is exactly what I'm going for I almost want it to be a day dress that is so big and flowy that it kind of tricks you into thinking that maybe it's nighttime like a night evening gown ish dress um, but in a very springy light daytime fabric I think it'll just be like a really really nice daytime dress that's what I have in my mind with it so yeah butterfly wings and a cute little linen crop jacket no zipper no buttons probably no collar very very simple and straightforward so I have a lot of work to do this month. All of these things have like deadlines <laughs> that have to get done. So this isn't like my like my previous um, makes videos or plans videos when I'm like, um, maybe I'll get it done, maybe I won't. No, all of these things have to get done. But they're all things that I am really, really, really excited about. They all feel new and fresh and all of that. So I am super excited to get started. So let me know what you guys are planning on sewing for March. Um, I know that the probably the southern part of the country has been sewing spring for a while now, but for those northerners um, who might just first be getting into spring sewing or thinking about spring sewing, I'm just excited to see what different parts of the country, like what all where you all are in terms of is it are you spring sewing are you not spring sewing is it still too early is it way too late and you're already into summer just let me know what your plans are for march and until next time i will see you soon bye